Once again, Agaya Ubuntu, and welcome to this Nova Sutra Solstice Celebration. Um, I think all of you know me, but uh, for those who will watch the recording later, I'm Dr. Michelle Merrill. Um, our plan for today, you're going to want to start out arranging yourself so that you can uh, be comfortable for a meditation session. You're going to want, you know, as quiet as you can manage a place to sit, um, minimize disturbances, turn off devices, alarms, all of that kind of thing so you don't have too many distractions. Um, and yeah, I will be editing the recording from this and posting it on the YouTube channel. Um, I probably won't get to that until uh, sometime tomorrow. So, you know, 12 plus hours from now. <laughs> um, and while we're settling in, seeing if a few other people log on, um, I'll talk a little bit about the Nova Sutras movement. I'll be sharing a little news. Uh, explain a little bit about the solstice. And of course, um, for most of you, this will just be a, a review or reintroduction of these terms, Agaya and Ubuntu. Uh, then in a few minutes, as is our tradition, we'll call the corners. And then after the cor calling the corners, go into the meditation itself. Um, that'll help us all settle. Uh, get into that calm meditative state. I'll let you know the exact time of the solstice and for a few minutes there we'll all really be focusing on loving kindness, on reverence, on Ubuntu, on Agaya, and sharing that with the world. After the meditation, um, we'll have some time that we can talk about the experience, answer your questions about the Nova Sutras movement. Uh, so we'll keep the microphones muted until that discussion. Um, okay, now I need to switch us to screen share. There we are. Um, So, as you've heard, the Nova Sutras movement, uh, we seek to bring together science and spirituality. And the intention is that we'll be co-creating practices that celebrate this intermingling of our rational, our emotional, and our intuitive uh, human minds. And face our human existence in this full recognition of the beauty and power of nature. In Nova Sutras, we celebrate the solstices, the equinoxes, the cross quarters, which are the midpoints between these, um, because they're these amazing planetary phenomena about the interaction of earth and sun. This comes out of science, so it's something that all reasonable humans can agree on. The seasons are related to the orbit of the earth around the sun. And the ways that the northern and southern hemispheres are sometimes tilted toward the sun and sometimes tilted away from the sun. Different religions all over the world include some celebration associated with these eight times of the year. These are sometimes called the grand octal or the seasonal cusps. In Nova Sutras, we choose these eight times of the year, solstice, equinoxes, cross quarters, um, and we do our octal meditations to focus on our two most fundamental concepts in Nova Sutras, what we call Agaya and Ubuntu. We use these terms 
as a brief way to express some fairly complex ideas. Um, Agaya is a neologism, it's a new word that's intended to express the joyous recognition of the deep, sacred beauty of the universe. This is an attempt to articulate that just amazement, the awe and wonder that we experience when we're in nature. Ubuntu is a term that we've borrowed from uh, languages in Southern Africa. Ubuntu represents community, mutual aid, interdependence. They sometimes say, you know, I am because we are. We need other people to help us thrive, learn, improve. So in Nova Sutras, we expand this meaning to embrace the connections between all things. Humans also can't really thrive without the life around us, the forests, the oceans, the grasslands, the rivers. This is where we get the air that we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat. We're deeply interconnected. And of course, we need that inspiration, that joy of a Gaia to connect us to the beauty and the wonder of the universe. Agaya and Ubuntu weave us all together in the more than human world with reverence, joy, generosity, gratitude, and loving kindness. In about 10 minutes will be the specific moment when the sun is directly overhead on the Tropic of Capricorn. And that is the instant of the December solstice. So no matter where you are on earth today, the sun appeared to be the farthest south it's going to be all year. It seems to rest there, you know, probably in the last couple of days, in the next couple of days, it's almost looks like it's standing still, which is where we get this word solstice. So in the Northern hemisphere, this is the shortest day and now the longest night of the year. Um, this solstice is associated with festivals like Yule that mark the start of winter, uh, but they also recognize the return of the sun, that the days are going to get longer from here. Um, and this is part of how we recognize the ending of one year as the next year begins. In the Southern Hemisphere, this is actually the beginning of summer and the longest day of the year. At the moment of the solstice, the sun will be directly overhead in the Western Australian desert. And as many of you have heard, uh, and some of you are experiencing, the entire Australian continent is um, undergoing this just unprecedented, drastic heat wave. Uh, Record-breaking temperatures and wildfires. Um, and this is before summer has even officially begun. So our meditation today are going to, we're going to focus our wishes for healing for a Gaia and Ubuntu there. But before we begin our meditation, it's time to call the corners. This practice helps us situate ourselves, get really connected to place and to the beings around us, human and otherwise. Um, all around the world, really. And when we're calling the corners, we send out wishes for all beings to abide in Agaya and Ubuntu, that they live lives filled with community, with connection, with loving kindness, with wonder. So if you'd like, uh, feel free to call the corners while standing and moving. Sometimes I do part of it actually as walking in an expanding spiral. Um, 
but you're you're also free to uh, just sit and think through it. But you want to really try to think and feel into those different directions. I like to start in the cardinal direction that represents where the sun is now. Uh, since I'm in California and it's night here, I'm actually going to start with the north and go around the compass directions uh, following the path of the sun uh, and then up and down and then uh, starting with ourselves as the center and radiating out. After we call the corners, then we'll settle in for the meditation practice. So here we go. May all beings to the north abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. May all beings to the east abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. May all beings to the south abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. May all beings to the west abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. May all beings above abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. May all beings below abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. May I abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. May all the beings nearby that I can reach with my senses abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. May all the beings in this watershed abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. May all the beings in the surrounding habitat in this bioregion abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. May all beings on this continent abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. May all the beings of this hemisphere abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. And may all beings belonging to Earth's beautiful biosphere abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. Now you're invited to sit comfortably, really settle in. Close your eyes now if you want. And to celebrate and connect with this solstice, I'll talk you through a guided meditation. I'll let you know the minute of the solstice and invite you to focus very specifically at that time. But just take a moment first to really feel your connection to the earth below you, grounding and stabilizing you. Feel your connection to the sky above you, lifting you up. Take a nice deep inhale. Hold it just for a moment. And then exhale slowly and completely, releasing your tension, letting your body relax. One more nice, slow, deep breath in. Savor that feeling of oxygen nourishing your cells. And then exhale and let all the rest of the tension leave your body. Continue taking nice, deep, relaxing breaths. And we'll take in just a moment to take a greater appreciation of Ubuntu and Agaya. Ubuntu is about our awareness of connection 
that sense of interbeing. So think about all of the different beings, the plants, the animals, the people that enrich your life and thank them. That gratitude for interbeing, that recognition of these interdependencies helps us get in contact with the wonder we feel that we call a Gaia. A Gaia is our profound connection to the sacred beauty of our universe. As you slowly inhale, invite this joy into the center of your being. Then as you release your breath, send your feelings of gratitude to spread out into the world. In this spiral dance of our Earth's orbit around the sun, we are just reaching the place that marks the solstice. From an earthly perspective, the sun is directly overhead where it's solar noon over the deserts of Western Australia. So I invite you to try and envision how that looks and feels right now, a brilliant, sun directly overhead, baking the stones beneath your feet, standing there under the bright midday sun, you would cast no shadow. Imagine taking that shimmering radiance that brilliant heat from the sun overhead and drawing it in and drawing in all the heat from the parched Australian lands and pulling it into our hearts and transforming all of that radiant energy into loving kindness, into Ubuntu and the Gaia. Now imagine Ubuntu and Agaya shining forth through you, from your heart, out into the world. Know that you're surrounded by community that everyone all around the world who's meditating right now is there with you. And that we are all taking all of that dangerous heat, all of that bright energy, and we are transforming it to send forth Ubuntu and the Gaia. Together, we shine Ubuntu and a Gaia across Australia. Together, we shine Ubuntu and a Gaia across the deep and sparkling immensity of the Indian Ocean the Pacific Ocean, the Southern Ocean. Together, we shine Ubuntu and Agaya to every place on Earth 
that's now touched by the light of the solstice sun. Together, we shine a Gaia and Ubuntu out to touch all of those in the dark of night right now, all around the world. Together, we shine the light of Ubuntu and Agaya across the universe from our beautiful little home world. Together, we inhale Ubuntu and exhale Agaya. Together, we inhale Agaya and exhale Ubuntu. Feel yourself as a connector between the air above your head and the earth beneath you. Recognize that our allies, the trees, make this connection between the worlds of sky and soil even more strongly. As they work to take in the carbon we release, and build their own bodies with it. They are knitting heaven and earth together. They are transforming that carbon into the beautiful structures of the trees themselves, cooling the world and giving us oxygen, a gift freely given that makes our lives possible. Thank the trees for standing with us during these times of dire beauty and wish them well as they continue their work the best they can. Thank the trees and plants all the living green things of this earth for providing us with the oxygen we need to breathe in, for taking up the carbon that we release. 
thank them for this deep expression of loving reciprocity of Ubuntu between all beings. Open yourself to a Gaia, to the joy, the wonder, the profound beauty of this amazing planet we live on. And really sink into that sense of gratitude for just being able to participate in this beautiful, complex dance of co-creation that we call life on earth. Now extend these experiences of Agaya and Ubuntu and offer them as a gift, extending them out into the whole world. The solstice is an important time for us to pause and reflect. What are some things that you're most grateful for from this last orbit around the sun? What are some things that you hope to leave behind you as we move into our next orbit around the sun? How do you want to feel at this time next year?
I invite you to take a few more deep breaths. Inhaling a Gaia. Exhaling a Buntu. Inhaling a Gaia. Exhaling a Buntu. And now, inhaling Ubuntu, feeling those interconnections, that belonging. And as you exhale, send forward all that joy and wonder of a Gaia. Inhale. Ubuntu and exhale a Gaia. Inhale Ubuntu and exhale a Gaia. As you're ready, very gently and slowly open your eyes. And with the most kindness you can give yourself, bring yourself back to the here and now. Just come back into a state of calm attention. Feel the energy of Ubuntu and Agaya still moving through you. From that intensity of, from the moment of the solstice. Take a little time to thank yourself for sharing in this worldwide meditation. Me in the Nova Sutras community, thank you for taking these steps toward global wellness and awareness, and toward a vision of a world abiding in a Gaia and Ubuntu. So welcome back everybody. Looks like we don't have too, too big a crowd, so I'm just gonna unmute everyone. But if we catch some feedback, I'll ask you to um, mute your microphones or I'll do that for you. Ah. Again, um, welcome. Thank you for being here as part of the conversation now. Um, we like to take some time after meditating together um, to share any things that come up that feel like they need to be expressed. And, you know, to really acknowledge um, this joy of being able to participate in an experience like this together. Um, I, I'm always so moved and so grateful uh, to be able to participate in this with you. Thank you. Is there anyone who wants to share anything that uh, came up for them during the meditation? Well, it's been a year. Feeding back in my It's been a year where we've uh -oh. 
So I think, um, Paul, you might have to turn your, your speaker volume all the way down. Someone else want to talk? Oh, sorry, Bob. Did you have more to say? Here, let's let's try you again. Uh oh. There we go. It looks. Like, can you hear me? Yes. Now we got you. Uh, uh, I was thinking of the things that you said that our connections in the world that we're grateful for in the last year, and I. I was thinking in terms of the natural world, and it came to me between my family and Paul's family, some of who passed this year, one of who passed this year, that uh, they all keep me connected and informed. They're all part of the same growing reality that I'm, I'm a part of. And it just seemed like I was trying to distill what about this year seemed most special. And also the the groups, the people that I've met in Santa Cruz who are concerned about our world and the climate. And I just was thinking that's clearly the most significant thing for this past uh, solar cycle for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to mention that. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Someone else have something come up for them? Want to talk about? I can't hear you yet, Paul. I think Paul's still unmuted. Oh, yeah. Here, let me see if I can bring you back. No, it's not let Paul. It's not letting me unmute you, so you might have to do it. Oh, okay. there it is. There we go. There we go. Oh. So. Um, your sound. Okay, I know. Thank okay. It's a selection. So I just wanted to share two things. Um, one is how much all of you being here means to me. Um, this is really wonderful. I wasn't, this is my first virtual um, meditation together. I haven't done it online before. Um, I've been at several of Michelle's live guided meditations, but it, uh, it was wonderful. I also wanted to share just a couple happy things. Um, I made a new friend today who's an organic farmer in Uganda, um, who is just a sort of singularly joyous um, individual. Um, with a very happy uh, young child. Um, and there's all these gorgeous photos of them together uh, in his beautiful uh, farm. Uh, sort of confusing, he calls it an urban, urban agriculture, but anyhow. So there's that. Um, and then there's also this wonderful indigenous or Native American woman uh, who is doing controlled burns in paradise and um, involving um, children from the high school um, in paradise. Mm. Um, she offered that to their parents. Uh, their children were eager to do it. Their parents uh, were enthusiastic. Um, and it just seems like a really sort of happy message of resilience and hope. Yeah. So, yeah, for those who don't know, Paradise was uh, here in California, the just devastating fires last fall. Um, um, and there were something like 85 people died in, in Paradise from the wildfire. Doing um, just, yeah, you know one of those situations where it is so just unrecognizably apocalyptic 
and then um, to see how much love and care is, is going into trying to restore that. I know there are a lot, uh, there's a whole group uh, doing what they call ecological restoration camps as well, uh, where they're replanting um, trees and other vegetation and trying to kind of do not only the getting getting those plants back but you know really getting the ecosystems back by taking as much knowledge as they can and trying to do that restoration work um, but it's not uh, not easy um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the um, the area around Mount St. Helens that was just incredibly devastated after it erupted, like the whole side of the mountain, this whole valley. And they thought it was just going to take forever. You know, it just seemed like everything was buried under so much ash. But in an incredibly short period of time, um, the, the way the ash deposited, it changed what had been sort of uh, taiga, mountain area, pine, into um, like a multi-lake uh, kind of a um, wetlands. Um, and because of, uh, and it ha all happened maybe within a period of 20 years, which is actually helping um, a lot of people uh, rethink how long it takes for environments to recover. Um, and of course, most of it was done naturally because it was just swaths of land. It was nothing like you know, all the roads there were gone. Like there was no people really involved in this, but just because of the passage of birds and animals, um, in, a, in a very short period of time, you went from taiga to destruction to like vast wetlands and with lots of many small lakes. And it's been kind of an eye opener about how regenerative our planet is given the freedom. And that, I mean, as devastating as it is to us, and that's really the big problem. <laughs> this is devastating to us, but it's not this planet knows how to recover. Um, you know, the question is, can we, can we recover and stay with it or not? <laughs> well, I should certainly on it. <laughs> Sorry, my fault? No, maybe it's mine. So Paul's muted, but Bob is not. No, I think Bob's muted now too. Sorry. The, yeah, you're both muted. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to bring you back, but it's not letting me do it. So uh, you, it's a, there you are. Might have to. Okay. Getting the feedback. We're so close here. It's one of the things. Hello. Hello. Oh. <laughs> Gosh, that knocked everything out. What was I saying? I don't know. I don't either. I'm sorry. It's so embarrassing internationally. Um, I forget what. Oh. Um, actually, it really did knock it right out. I was thinking about the Mount St. Helens things, but I can't remember what I was going to say about it. I was kind of wondering, we have at least one person from Australia. Is this correct? And I have a friend I correspond with who's, I think, in South Queensland. That's on the west side. With, and I, I haven't yet asked them, how are you doing? Because they're mm -hmm. conversing normally online. But it's... a uh, the droughts that we've had here in California and what's happening in Australia is much more intense. Yeah, and it's. I'm just wondering what's what's going to come out of this. I know, unfortunately, they like we seem to have a government that is moving backward as quickly as it can for no apparent reason except a bad upbringing. Apparently, <laughs> we have some very badly parented government officials right now. Mm. But I, what I hope for next year, you asked, what, how did I want to feel next year at this time? And I, I really hope I feel the, the joy of a new beginning and that 
what needs to happen is that people themselves start feeling revitalized about a new beginning. That's what I would most hope for in this year's cycle. It's asking a lot, but uh, we need a lot. So it seems like a good thing to ask. Yeah. Maybe things we can change some things that will really matter. That's what I'm really, really hoping. I'm sure we all are. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we all are. I, I did forget what I was going to say, but so I just winged it. <laughs> I think you had some interesting things that came up anyway. Um, Marilee, I want to give you a chance if you want to tell us a little bit about what's going on down there. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I, can't, I couldn't unmute myself. So, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, if I'm muted, that's you. fine. Um, yeah, so I'm in Western Australia and we've had some bad fires uh, north of Perth and south of me and I woke up the other night smelling smoke and you know enough you've seen all the, oh. the photos and everything else and we'd been through a heat wave. Um, yeah, it's I think it raises the alarm like I mean you often smell smoke and I have the windows open and and even while we're meditating Quite, it's a lot cooler day to day, but quite windy. And yeah, it's amazing. You know, you because that's primed, it's like your heart, you know, my mind sort of goes to, oh, that fire in Collie must have sparked up again with all these strong winds. And But it might be that someone's illegally lit in a barbecue or something. I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah, or, but yeah, the, the whole thing of control burns and indigenous ways of doing things, there's a, a lot of... Um, it's really hard here because, I mean, the way they used to do it in, in Australia, they didn't have the grasses that we've got now. So all the introduced grasses burn totally different. And they had, uh, a lot of people think that the Australian Aboriginal people were um, hunter-gatherers, but they weren't. They had an agricultural system through most of the society, not all communities, and fish traps and, um, and ways of um, harvesting things. And the land, when you read um, some of the the really early records was more parkland looking. So obviously they used to use a lot of burning um, to do that. A lot of it was for hunting and, you know, and, and things, but, um, but then on the other hand, now we've got such pockets of huge amounts of urban sprawl. It's just, I've got um, some people from France staying here as work away traveling guests and they just blown away by that the motor car is clean. And I'm sure that's in the USA as well. You know, the public transport and everything. So just the whole design. And this ties in with, I think what Jennifer was saying with about, you know, for humans to continue to live on this planet, you know, my hope is that people wake up um, to realizing that we have to totally change the way our architecture, our whole urban, you know, the developers are still wanting to you know, smash down more bush and create urbans that are sprawled out with no networks into them for public transport. Um, and yeah, but I, I was sort of finding it hard to know, like what, I, um, to look into the future and know how I want to feel in, in future times. I'm finding really difficult, but I do try and just hang on to the vision of a rewilded world. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the things that I've just been writing on and I want to write more on um, are to do with that there's this huge movement and rightly so because, you know, with people like we've got, we call him Scummo, Scott Morrison, who got into parliament because the, his political party got um, elected, but he wasn't the leader then. But then, you know, they do these things and topple the other one and then he, got, he gets in and he's just, oh, anyway. Um, and so there's all this anger because of their inaction and the fact that he's in, you know, I think he might be on his way back or coming back, but went to Hawaii in such a devastating time, you know, and it's like, oh, no, it's just, oh, the fireys, you know, they like, you know, they like doing that. So like, and then two die. Uh, that, that was the mm -hmm. two people, two firefighters had to die before mm -hmm. he decided to do anything. And, and this is where this human bit comes in. Not a, no matter about the thousands and thousands of hectares and the koala bears and, and the bats and you know, everything else. And 
um, yeah, so it's this, um, now I'm starting to ramble a little bit, but the, the whole, um, rather than just the rage and what George Monbiot also wrote an article on the anger that we feel about the inaction that our political leaders are making, that is becoming the sole focus that I'm seeing on news um, on Facebook feeds lately. Mm. And I think we need to direct it and not get involved with that and to keep focusing on the, on the love, on the, um, you know, Ubuntu and, you know, and just all the Gaia, um, this whole regeneration, you know, that you've also spoken of and it, it's happening. There's so many places that like in the Red Sea, they're doing permaculture there. And you look at the pictures and it's desert and rocks and they are creating edible forests these people can eat from. And if we can keep focusing on that and keep keeping that vision alive and not get drawn into the, um, oh, well, we've got to get rid of this government. Yes, we do need some good leadership, but I think it's going to come from, from the grassroots um, up. And that is my hope. Um, that people will unite rather than divide more about about things. So um, thank you for letting me uh, share that. I was actually zoning in and out a little bit. I've been, um, so what is it now? It's midday. I first woke around 4 a.m. and wanted to join a 5 a.m. minute of, so it was 5 a.m. for me for that minute of silence. And, and I've done quite a few meditations and, yeah, so, uh, but yeah, I was, I was sort of there, but sort of like <laughs> zoning in and out. So thanks very much, Michelle. Um, yeah, lovely to join you around the world um, at this time of the actual solstice. Oh, it's wonderful to see you here. I'm so glad. So, um, let's see, we have, we have the other Robert who hasn't really talked yet do you have anything you want to share with us any questions you have oh okay um to be oh, just okay. a good place to be so can you mute yourself didn't turn off. Oh, wait. Okay. So probably um, at this point, probably the easiest thing is to just make sure only one of you has a microphone on and then the other person has their sound all the way off as well. All right. Um, Due to technical difficulties. Yeah. I love that we have a little technical agaya in Ubuntu. It's <laughs> an interesting way of framing it. Okay. Yeah. Well, not, not framing the sound issue. I just mean here we are doing this thing together with technology, which isn't mm -hmm. always the easiest thing to figure out. Yeah. Um, there's definitely people more skilled than me. Um, but yet there's a Gaia and there's an Ubuntu. Yeah. So that's beautiful. So um, does anyone have anything they wanted to say about things they were ready to leave behind. So we talked a little bit about sort of, you know, leaving behind the obsession with um, just being angry at the ineffective leadership that seems to be a global pandemic right now. Um, and I think, I think that's a, a good place to start, but, um, are there other things that we're ready to to let go of to help us be more effective agents for positive change? Nope. <laughs> 
wondering with Paul um, and, and Robert, is it possible you can go into different rooms? I mean, if you're that close, if that's, is that what's causing yeah. the problem? Yeah, the way that, the way that the... Zoom deals with sound is it just is saying, yeah. okay, if there's something on my microphone that matches what's coming out of my speakers, then I'll mm. shut that down. Uh, but if, if your microphone is picking up the speakers next to you, it echoes it and that's when you get feedback. Hooray! <laughs> um, okay, there we go. Did you have a question, Marilee? No. Um, oh, I can you turn your sound off or mute yourself for something? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm giving it 110%. Is that helping? It's much better. Oh. Yeah. It's much, much better. Okay. So I actually sort of want to follow up on what Marilee said because um, I have been spending a lot of time on social media. Um, and I think there's a kind of anger that is really justified and, and even necessary. Um, but at the same time, I'm, I'm the thing that frightens me the most right now is, is not that we won't be able to, that we're incapable of agreeing on, um, strong climate action. The thing that, that worries me the most is that habits of thinking that we can do things without other people, of regarding people that we don't automatically gravitate to is in some way, you know, not a necessary part of our moving into the future. Um, as a people that that habit is not fading as quickly as it needs to. Mm -hmm. um, and I am particularly worried about the number of progressives I see whose empathy seems to stop at the borders of red states um, because there's this enormous opportunity in America. Um, at least I see it as an enormous opportunity uh, in the level of hardship that is frankly you know, it's, it's all over the country, but it is particularly profound in the red states. Mm -hmm. uh, those are low-hanging votes for anything. You know, for strong climate action that is also caring about human beings. You know, there's public investment that creates living wage jobs, that just brings hope to places that haven't seen any for a long time. Um, so I think this is an enormous harvest of, of sort of unity and shared purpose. And I just, uh, what I look forward to celebrating is that we actually manage to harvest. Um, and that, that will mean leaving some things behind. Just not creating this little habit. So we've, uh, we've hit the, the end of the hour. Um, I'm happy to stay on if people want to talk, but I want to give a couple of quick announcements and then uh, we can let this roll a little bit longer if we want. Uh, first of all, I want to let everybody know that the, the, our next octal meditation uh, is going to be the cross quarter on February 4th. Um, the challenge is that it's, 08.55 uh, UTC, Greenwich Mean Time. Um, and that means that it's uh, five minutes before 1 a.m. Uh, local time here in California for me. So <laughs> probably I will not do a live uh, session right at that time. Um, uh, and I'm not sure now if I'm going to 
uh, do a live session earlier and then put the recording up so that people um, can, can listen through the meditation. Um, we might do it that way or I might just do uh, pre-recorded only. So I'll have to have to work that out. Um, so keep posted by making sure that you're subscribed and checking for our newsletters because for sure a newsletter will come out um, in the, the week ahead of time. Uh, and as soon as I get those plans in place, I'll probably send out just a, a quick email to all the newsletter subscribers letting you know um, what the plan will be. Uh, but again, you know, there will be some kind of meditation available, um, but we might end up doing it like 12 hours ahead or something just um, so that I don't have to try to be set up and ready to do this at one in the morning because I don't, I, I'm not up to that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, for those of you in the Santa Cruz area, uh, we're planning to do uh, New Year Shinrin Yoku, possibly on New Year's Day or within the first few days. Um, and there's a poll, if you go to the Santa Cruz site, there's a poll to sort of see what time is gonna work for the largest number of people. Um, and my thought was, uh, let's, let's just make it an easy walk so it's accessible to some of our friends who are less mobile. Um, so we'll just be doing the main Redwood Grove at Henry Cowell. Um, and we might uh, carpool up there so that not everybody has to pay the entrance fee. Um, and then uh, again, just a reminder, I'm gonna be um, editing the recording from this and posting it on YouTube sometime tomorrow. Um, so I'll make sure that the link is on the Nova Sutras website as soon as that's done. So it should be um, in, you know, less than 24 hours from now, probably more like 15 hours from now. Um, if for some reason you think you want to not have something you said on the recording, please do let me know right away though. Uh, otherwise, um, you know, it's a lot easier for me if I can just kind of put it up as is. Um, so I think those were the important things I wanted to tell you about. Again, um, uh, make sure that you're getting the newsletters and you can always email me directly if you think something should have come out that you didn't see, uh, novasutras at gmail.com. Um, but add that to your address book if you haven't seen a newsletter yet, because I think all of you are on the newsletter. Um, and I think that's about all I need to tell you for now. Does anybody have any questions or last last thoughts before we close this out? I have lights going dim. Hold on. Oh, <laughs> I'm fading away. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> well, you're getting into the spirit of our winter solstice, it is. right? It's, it is. It's like dimming right out. That's really hilarious. <laughs> Very arty. Very arty looking. Mm. Oh, that's. Another that thing I should... That was my theatrics for the evening. <laughs> nice. Um, there are a couple of really interesting astronomical things going on. Um, being the winter solstice, this is, we're actually in the Geminid meteor shower as well. So there might be a few meteors out there, except I think here in Santa Cruz, we're under clouds pretty heavily already. Um, and on... Uh, Christmas night for some of us, or the day after Christmas, uh, the night of the 25th, morning of the 26th, depending on where you are, there is going to be um, a solar eclipse. It won't be visible in the Western Hemisphere. Um, there are parts of Australia that will see a partial eclipse. So that should be an interesting time. Um, again, those astronomical events like the peak of the solar eclipse make a really good time to sort of just come together in a, a worldwide meditation. So I'll try and, um, for those of you who use Twitter, I'll definitely be posting it there. Uh, and I might just send an email out to the, to the newsletter subscribers saying, uh, you know, it won't be a live meditation like this, but just saying, if, if you're available, let's come together and meditate. Uh, at whenever the, the 
peak of the eclipses and I think it's like kind of uh, in California I think it's kind of late night on Christmas night so um, yeah well um, so I think let's just take another moment to just kind of drop in a little bit and a um, couple deep breaths getting in touch again with our awareness of Ubuntu and this community that we've woven together through this magical technology. Getting in touch with our our gratitude, our wonder, our joy, that's all wrapped up in the beauty of the living world and the Gaia. Thank you, Ubuntu and Agaya, to all of you. Agaya. Thank you. Agaya, 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 Agaya,